right now, it, it is a tax day, and a lot of people are kind of looking at uh, what this is costing them and really what the uh, – I, I don't know what what you have you seen your taxes go up or down. Odds are you've seen them go up the last couple of years. We're going to see them go up in St. Louis County very soon. Uh, we're joined right now by uh, Mark Perry, who is uh, with the American Enterprise Institute. Uh, he is also a professor of economics and finance at the University of Michigan on their uh, Flint campus. And uh, Mr. Perry, thank you for joining us. Yeah, hi, Mark. Yeah, happy Tax Day. Yeah. <laughs> is it? <laughs> Well, especially yeah. tomorrow. You know, today's a federal holiday in Washington, D.C., so right. actually people have until tomorrow if they're paying in and uh, need to file uh, this tomorrow the official deadline. I, I love the uh, article that you put out on the American Enterprise Institute had shared it on just some historical s- thoughts on tax day, g- taking us back to 1913 when filing your taxes was a lot simpler than it is today. Well, right, and also, um, you know, because there was like a 70, in today's dollars, a $73,000 personal exemption, so really, and for married couples, it was almost 100000 so really very few people were paying taxes. It started at 1%, and the top tax rate was uh, only at 7%. And the entire 1040 um, schedule with all of the forms and instructions was only four pages. <laughs> So, of course, it was much simpler then, and it's still that way in a lot of countries, like I mentioned in that post about Japan and a lot of other Western European countries, where it's much simpler and easier. So we've gone from a very simple system that applied to almost, uh, well, only a few very wealthy Americans to now you know, most people pay in some amount of federal income tax, and it's also very complicated. So I mentioned in there, too, is that the estimates are that it takes something like six billion hours every year for Americans to comply with the income tax code in terms of collecting data or your your records and then filing taxes and filling out forms. And so it's gotten very costly in terms of the time that it takes. So we've come a long way in about 100 years. Yeah, no kidding. And just on a side note for a moment, because you you brought up how easy it is to file taxes in, in some other countries like Japan, for example, because the government basically tallies it up for you. Is that correct? And, and my understanding is, I saw a New York Times article on this the other day, that, um, that that there's a lobby in the U.S. which represents the tax preparers who doesn't, of course, don't want to go to that system because it would be money out of their pocket. Well, yeah, that's what they call, I think, the tax <laughs> complexity lobby. And so when you think about it, I mean, the IRS, for most people, they have all of your um, income information. If you're like a typical wage or salaried employee, you know, they have all of your bank information, they have all of your income information, they have often your, um, you know, interest income and capital gains um, information, or they have access to it through, if you have an account at Vanguard or Fidelity. So, yeah, so, I mean, it's like they really have quite a bit of information. So if you had a very simple system, like they do in Japan, where they just kind of calculate it for you, and then if there's any dispute, then, of course, you can challenge it. So at least for most individuals, it would be very simple. But of course, you know, the turbo taxes and the Intuit and H&R Block, they have a, a personal or self-interest in having it as, as complicated as possible. Because uh, what is it here? We spend something like um, $2 billion a year on tax preparation software. And then you still have to you know, take the time to fill it out. We spend something like $10 billion for the services of tax preparation firms. And so, of course, those um, that lobby, that um, you know, industry, they have a, a you know self-interest in keeping it complicated, and they have lobbied against going to some kind of more simplified system like in Japan. So yeah, that's what so we're kind of up against. That's something complexity. Something lobby. else that I guess uh, uh, the, Donald Trump and anybody else who's pushing for tax reform, they're also fighting against that as well. Well, yeah, they are, because, you know, the accountants and the lawyers and the tax preparation industry, you know, they have an interest in keeping it <laughs> as complicated as possible. I mean, I think I had on here as well that in, in terms of uh, the 1040 schedule, now just the instructions now is about 100 pages, so that, you know, it's just is very complicated and time-consuming for the average person, and it could be a lot simpler and a lot less complicated, but now that we're you know, kind of in the mess we're in, it's going to be very hard to go back to a simplified system because of this tax complexity 
lobby that wants to keep it the way it is, or they actually maybe want it even more complicated. So that's going to be difficult. Yeah, uh, we're talking to Professor Mark Perry. He, he is a professor of economics and finances at the University of Michigan. He wrote a great article today on j- just kind of looking back in history on tax day, what things used to be like. Uh, point number five that you make in this article is about tax progressivity and our progressive tax and who pays how much. There's a lot of focus on the top 10% or 1% of wage earners in this country. Uh, p- some people have kind of painted them as the evil ones, but they're still bearing the brunt of the tax taxation in this country. Well, right, and that's why I actually even said that I'd like to personally express my thanks <laughs> to the top 1%, because that group of Americans pays almost 40% of all the income taxes collected, and the top 10% pays more than two-thirds of all the income taxes collected. So it's a very progressive tax system. So when we talk about, well, the rich should pay more, well, they're already paying quite a bit in terms of their disproportionate share, and I even pointed out as well, is that the top 1% of American taxpayers pay the same amount in taxes as the bottom 95% of U.S. taxpayers. So we do have this very progressive income tax system, and the rich are really paying a disproportionate share of the taxes collected. And then you look at the bottom 50%, um, and they pay almost nothing, that the bottom 50% and the most recent year available only paid less than 3% of all the income taxes paid. So it's a very highly progressive tax system that really penalizes the most wealthy or the most entrepreneurial and most successful American. Absolutely. And and it, it just, it, it seems like a long time ago, and it was, I, I agree with that, but uh, like my grandfather was still, was had just been born. He was a couple years old when this country still didn't have an income tax. So you got to keep everything you earned. And uh, we have moved dramatically away from that since 1913. It's just, uh, it's kind of a, uh, um, um, in, I, I don't know what the word I'm looking for. It's it's awe inspiring when you think of a shock and shock and awe. Maybe that's what I'm looking for when you think of how far we've come in that period of time in terms of the the change in attitude in America toward taxes and their people's willingness to be taxed more all the time. Well, yeah, and I had that kind of cute graphic where it showed a picture from 1913 and. It points out that, um, you know, up until 1913, Americans kept all of their earnings, and there was no income tax system, and it actually required an amendment to the Constitution because it was illegal to tax income in this country. So, But then even at that time, in 1912, we still had schools, we had roads, we had colleges, we had a railroad system, we had subways and an army and navy, and somehow we're able to, uh, you know, uh, have, a, have quite a bit of infrastructure in place even without an income tax system. And so, yeah, we've come a long way in more than 100 years. Yeah. Happy uh, happy tax day to America, huh? Thank you very much. Uh, Professor Mark Perry, thank you for your time. I'll direct people to the website at aei.org where you can read more on uh, Professor uh, Perry's articles and, and the other thought-provoking uh, experts they have on the website there. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Mark. Yep, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, I, I wanted to, to get to the professor on because just some of the stuff that he pointed out here would just drive you crazy when you think about it. Like, for example, why do we call it the Internal Revenue Service? Like they're providing a service to us. Um, why, why wasn't it a department? Like, like uh, you know, the Department of Labor or a commission, or an administration, but they called it a service, which was kind of odd. And um, he, he brought in some of my favorite quotes here on taxes, which I thought it was brilliant. Ronald Reagan, the taxpayer, that's someone who works for the federal government but doesn't have to take a civil service examination. Um, and also, I am proud to be paying taxes in the United States. The only thing is, I could be just as proud for half the money. That was Arthur Godfrey, one of the other great quotes on taxes that we have on here. 314-969-9797. I'll get to some of your phone calls as you uh, get ready to celebrate Tax Day tomorrow in America. Isn't it wonderful? It's going to be the 18th this year. Boy, I tell you what, it adds up. It sure does. We'll get to that. We'll get to your phone calls. Uh, We'll take a quick break. You're listening to The Mark Cox Show. Mark Cox Show on FM News Talk 97.1, AM 1490, and 971talk.com.
now in, and we need your help to decide the winners. Go to 971talk.com and vote for your favorite student patriot, and the top five with the most votes win $100. Reward a junior patriot by voting now at 971talk.com. Brought to you by Granite Transformations.